Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Troy Clayton, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Group Captain Joanna Elkington. We warmly welcome the family of Lance Corporal Robert Arthur Sloan, whose story will be told shortly. We also acknowledge Major General Eric Oventurf, Director of Plans, Programs and Requirements, Headquarters Air Force Reserve Command, Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia, and the accompanying International Junior Officer Leadership Development Delegation. We also welcome members of the Naval Association of Australia to commemorate the 77th anniversary of the sinking of the HMAS Canberra. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We also acknowledge the members of the RSL and Services Club Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the ceremony broadcast across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by the family of Lance Corporal Robert Arthur Sloan and visitors to the memorial. If you're able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest, Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Lance Corporal Robert Arthur Sloan. Robert Sloan, known as Bob to his family and friends, was born in September 1891, one of many children born to Robert and Janet Sloan on the family property of Bayliss Glynn at Bungarby, New South Wales. Young Robert attended Bungarby Public School and later worked as a labourer. Robert Sloan enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force on the 17th of January 1917 at Queen Beanne, one of four Sloan brothers to sign up and serve in the war. Only two of the brothers would return home to Australia. Robert Sloan joined the reinforcements for the 13th Australian Infantry Battalion and trained for a month at Liverpool near Sydney before embarking for the war aboard the transport ship Wiltshire. He arrived in England on the 11th of April 1917 and after a further four months training, sailed for the war on the Western Front. He joined the 13th Australian Infantry Battalion in August 1917 in Belgium and on the day of his arrival came under German artillery shelling and witnessed fierce aeroplane dogfights in the skies above his trench. On the 2nd of May 1918, Sloan and the 13th Battalion took part in a minor operation on German trenches near villiers bredeneur During this raid, the Australian troops came under heavy German machine gun, sniper and high explosive artillery fire. Sloan received a gunshot wound to his wrist and his injuries were so severe that he was hospitalised for over a month. He returned to his unit on the 4th of June. Just 16 days later, on the 20th of June 1918, Sloan's brother Edward, serving with the 30th Infantry Battalion, died of wounds he sustained while fighting at Mullencore. The historical record shows that Edward's grave was visited by one of the Sloan brothers serving in the Great War, though it is unclear which of the remaining three brothers it was. On the 8th of August 1918, Sloan and the 13th Battalion advanced on German positions at Mulcor, to the east of Corby. As his battalion reached one of its objectives, it came under heavy fire from a German machine gun position. Without hesitation, Sloan moved to a flanking position and charged at the German gun in full view of the enemy. He single-handedly took the entire German gun crew prisoner and captured the weapon. His commanding officer later wrote that he performed this action with great dash and gallantry, and that through his prompt and most courageous action, his company was enabled to move forward and consolidate on its allotted objective. His courage on this day saw him awarded the prestigious Military Medal, and he was also promoted to the rank of Lance Corporal. Sloan performed this action only 10 kilometres away from the site where his brother Edward had died only weeks before. On the 18th of September 1918, Sloan and the 13th Battalion attacked German positions at Louvergia, to the east of Peron, in northern France. In rainy and muddy conditions, the men of the battalion were waiting in their lines to advance into no man's land when a German shell struck the line, wounding Sloan and killing nine others. Sloan was badly wounded in his right arm, leg and abdomen and was evacuated to a nearby casualty clearing station. His injuries were so severe that the medical staff were un unable to operate on him and he died of his wounds later that day. He is buried at the Brie British Ceremony in France, where over 400 Commonwealth soldiers of the First World War now lie. His gravestone reads, in loving memory of the dearly loved son of Mr. and Mrs. Sloan of New South Wales. He was 27 years old. Lance Corporal Robert Sloan is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, amongst almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Lance Corporal Robert Arthur Sloan, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and, the, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post.
they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub of Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We'd like to thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial. I wish you all a very good evening. Thank you.